going on youtube nation this is dark dividend if you guys are new to my youtube channel make sure you subscribe and hit the notification bells on my future videos man i am like terribly stuffy right now so i'm gonna go over a dividend stock i sold it's that it's actually a real estate investment trust i'm gonna provide my rationales as to why i got rid of it in my m1 finance dividend portfolio and there's so much better reits out there i mean there's so many better reits so why I, I didn't feel like sticking with this one. And again, you know, I have a disclaimer at the end of the video. But a lot of changes that I make, you know, it can happen. If I don't like a stock, I will get rid of it. I don't pump stocks on here. I, I'm very transparent with what I do with my dividend investing strategy. And this one just did not cut it. So let's check this readout right now. And that read I got rid of was Aries Commercial Real Estate Court. So it's sitting at 1048. Now, again, the commercial real estate sector is what's really turning me off. One, they haven't done well against the S&P. That's fine. That seems like a buy to me. But the average volume, okay, is 651.65K. The market cap is 572.96 million. Year range is 752 to 1401. Day range was 1046 to 1064, and its previous close was 1061. So I'm going to go over these guys as to why I sold them. I'm going to provide my rationales. Let's check that out. So based on their portfolio, they say senior portfolio defensive properties, well diversified. As of March 31st, 2023, Aries Commercial Real Estate had total originated commitments of $2.5 billion across 53 loans. Aries Commercial Real Estate has a diversified portfolio across asset classes and geographies. We need to go over that. They go over senior mortgage loans, their property type distribution, office 38%. That kind of turns me off a little bit. Multifamily, 23% hotel, 5% mixed use, 10% industrial, 10% student housing, 2% self-storage, 5%, and residential condominium, 7%. Their geographic composition is Southwest 28%, Midwest 19%, the West 17%, Mid-Atlantic Northeast is 25%, and Southwest is 11%. So again, their senior mortgage loans at 98%, subordinated debt and preferred equity investments at 2%. So you see all these right here. This is what they're about. But we need to go further. Their type of investments are senior mortgage loans, subordinated debt, mezzanine loans, other commercial real estate preferred equity investments. Their transaction types are acquisition, recapitalization, restructuring, general refinancing, and construction. Their target investment characteristics, characteristics I can barely talk, asset values of 10 to 250 million, attraction basis with above average supply, demand dynamics, Solid credit fundamentals, strong market position with a competitive economic advantage. We'll see. Experienced sponsors with deep property and local market experience. Appropriately structured and documented investments. Return opportunity that compensates for perceived risk. Those sectors they invest in. Again, multifamily, office, self-storage, industrial, and mixed use. This office is a big turnoff for me right now. Property types they selectively consider as hospitality, retail, medical office, single tenant, owner, occupied, specialty use, and student housing. So let's go over a few more things. So here's a few things. Oh, annually in millions US dollars, it has gone up, which is good. 2016, 45, 2017, 46, 2018, 55, 2019, 77, 2020, 82, 2021, 102, and 2022, 106. I still like it. Don't get me wrong, but I had to get rid of it because there's a few things that irk me a little bit. I'm going to go over that. One thing is their earnings per share has gone down significantly. That kind of turns me off a little bit. This is from 2012 to 2023. It was going up. I would say this is probably pandemic-wise. 
uh, time frame, and then it's just gone significantly down, which is a big turnoff. I'm going to go over a few more things. And remember, a real estate investment trust, FFO, is most important. So I like going to Guru Focus for a few things. So Aries Commercial Real Estate FFO per share of the fiscal year ending in December 2022 is calculated as FFO, okay, was 0 0.57. FFO per share for the quarter of March 2023 is negative 0 0.12. So right here, FFO per share trailing 12 months ended in March 2023 adds up to the quarterly data reported by the company within the most recent 12 months, which was 14 cents or 0 0.14. So this site is very good, honestly, is a reference for me looking at certain things. So the FFO is not very strong, okay? And you saw the earnings per share. That's another red flag. But FFO is more important. Forget about P-E ratio when it comes to a real estate investment trust. That is not good. Forget about that. I'll, I'll mention it, you know, if it's posted um, on Google. But I always say right away, FFO is extremely important. FFO and AFFO are the most important for REITs. Now I'm going to jump to their dividend history. So I'm going to jump jump to their dividend history. I'm going to start in 2012. It was six cents, and it was stagnant at 25 cents in 2012 till 2016, and it jumped to 26 cents. Then 27 cents in 2017, 28 cents in 2018, 29 cents in 2018, 31 cents, and then stagnant at 33 cents from 2019 to 2021. Then in 2021, it was 35 cents. It cracked 37 cents, and it's stagnant at 35 cents. So the dividend growth in five years is 1.06%, a PE ratio of 92%. Now, the thing about PE ratios with REITs, it's going to be high, but the FFO is terrible right now. You bought one share, you made 132 with a 125 or 5% dividend yield. And that dividend growth in five years is 1.06%. Earnings per share suck. So I got rid of these guys. I feel very confident getting rid of them. If things rebound, sure, I'll rebuy them. It's like, you know, I was being very straightforward with AT&T or Verizon. If things turn around and things are looking good, of course I'm going to buy shares. I kind of like those guys as companies. I hope they do well. I hope they rebound. But the money, the financial statements, and the numbers just don't add up. It's not attractive enough for me. So I can buy dividend stocks or buy, you know, Truist Financial or these other REITs that are better, NNN REIT, um, Realty Income, Agree Realty Corporation, Arbor Realty Trust. I'm just thinking of like REITs that are, like run circles around these guys. There's no reason to invest in these guys. This is why I'm doing this and getting rid of them right now. Now, if they rebound again, I will buy them again. But I sold them. I feel very good about selling them. It's like a, it's like a relationship where there's a plateau. There's no future. You know, you're dating someone and they just want to sit there and drink and party. They want to build themselves. They don't want to work out. They just want to do nothing, you know? be complacent and just don't want to grow as a person. That's how I feel about ACRE as a symbol, okay, which is Aries Commercial Real Estate Corporation. It's just not attractive to me. I, there's no growth. No, The dividend growth is not attractive to me. And I got a lot better REITs out there. So I was just being very transparent with this uh, sell. And if they rebound, they'll do better. So again, of course, this channel is not financial advice. I will jump to my disclaimer, but I wanted to post this video before I post a video on Friday. If you guys enjoyed this video, if you're new to this YouTube channel, make sure you subscribe and hit the notification bell so you don't miss future videos. Hopefully I can breathe. You guys take care and have a great Tuesday night. So as a reminder, this YouTube channel that I have,
is for entertainment purposes only. Seek professional advice from a financial advisor. I am not a financial advisor. I'm not going to tell you what to buy. I am not allowed to tell you what to buy. If you ask me what stocks to buy, I'm not going to tell you because it's not. I don't give financial advice. I, you'll probably see me in the comment section say, I don't give financial advice. Some stocks in this video may be bought or sold. Some stocks that I've owned in the past, I have sold as well. So if I don't like them or, you know, I get rid of them. So I'll just be honest with you and straightforward. This is my dividend investing journey. I show you my dividend investing journey. So you also may lose money with some of your purchases that you make with stocks. You're taking a risk buying stocks. I can tell you I've taken risks. I've lost some money on some stocks in REITs, like the Rich Uncle's Bricks REIT. And that was not fun, but guess what? I had enough resources to, um, I didn't have all my eggs in one basket. Again, I want to be straightforward with you guys. I'm just showing you my dividend investing journey. This is what my channel's about. I love doing stock analysis and dividend stock analysis um, videos. I really enjoy um, interacting with you guys on my YouTube channel. We have a lot of subscribers. I'm going to try to keep up with all your requests for dividend stocks. But again, I'm not a financial advisor, so don't look at me like I'm your savior or anything. I, I enjoy really um, the dividend investing journey, and I provide my rationales as to why I buy these dividend stocks in these videos. So if you do like a certain stock, I will do a stock analysis and dividend stock analysis. But remember, this is not financial advice. You guys take care and have a good one. And one more thing. I love making passive income. I hope you do too. Take care.